shocking statistics have emerged about the rise of domestic abuse in lockdown. Every 30 seconds, a call was made to the police reporting an incident of domestic violence in the first seven weeks of lockdown. And for victims of domestic abuse, these past months have been a terrifying ordeal. And it's one that broadcaster Victoria Derbyshire understood because of her own personal experience. Victoria, thanks so much uh, for being with us this morning. We saw you in that clip there getting quite emotional, understandably. Were you surprised by how you felt returning to your family home and seeing it after 35 years? I was really surprised because, um, as Colleen knows, I'm quite a practical person, quite straightforward, you know, pragmatic. And, yeah, I think it was just getting there and seeing it after so long. I just had this kind of surge of memories of, of things that had gone on or that I'd experienced. Um, you know, my father was not like a father should be. He used to um, hit me, he used to hit my mum. There was an occasion where he locked my mum in her bedroom and was beating her up and I was scared and I was about 12 or 13. And uh, I ran to the police station, which was about a mile or so away. And I had to go there myself because our phone had been cut off. He hadn't paid the bill. So I just ran down the road and ran in and said, please, can you come? You know, my dad's hit, hitting my mum. You know, he, he, he would drag me out of bed in the middle of the night. He tipped hot tomato soup over me once. Just, you know, various incidents like that over the years. The thing is, Victoria, hi. So nice Hi. to see you. Um, the thing is, I, I have worked with you now for the last couple of years, and I cried when I watched that part of the show because you, you never even opened up to me about that part of, of your life. Um, why do you think that is? And do you feel better for now letting all of that out? Why do you think you did hold it in? Because it's not part of my life, Colleen, anymore. It, 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 you know, it happened when I was growing up. My parents got divorced when I was 16. It, the whole childhood wasn't ideal. My mum was amazing. She, she tried to make, make up for his failings as a parent. And I've, 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 I've compartmentalised it. it. It has no impact on my life at all. It happened. It was what it was. And I've, I've, I've dealt with it. And that's why I I was surprised when I went back and, and became emotional because I just, you know, I, I, I'm really straightforward and kind of calm about it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, we all watched it, didn't we? Yeah. And we were talking about yeah. it this morning and Kelly, you were saying, you know, it's interesting in terms of the, the types of abuse, something that you might not think about actually. Yeah, so Victoria, literally, what you did, I think, was shine a light on something that, you know, myself, I was, I've been in an abusive relationship in my past. And so actually watching somebody else sharing, having the bravery to share their story, um, and you're just helping so many people. So I just wanted to say congratulations on that. But what was really interesting is the different types of abuse that I think you highlighted that maybe weren't we weren't aware of as much, like the force feeding and things like that. Well, that, I mean, uh, over the years, like many, many of you, I've interviewed lots of um, survivors of domestic abuse. And when the, a young woman called Sophie told me that in lockdown, her partner had been force feeding her, I had never heard of that before. And as you rightly say, there are, there are many forms of abuse. That was new to me. And I'm not sure people realise that that is domestic abuse it does come under the category of domestic abuse and this poor young woman she was saying you know we got to the point where I didn't know it I didn't know any other words apart from no and he kept doing it so much so that she ended up being physically sick now she yeah. managed to get out during lockdown you know it's, I know it's hard enough to get out of an abusive household in normal times to get out during lockdown is is absolutely remarkable the people who managed to do that she Absolutely. did get out and she is now safe and away from him and in, in accommodation um, provided by the local council. Fantastic. Um... Victoria, um, your amazingly um, important documentary has also highlighted the, uh, the statistics and the fact that during lockdown, there was something like the, the three women killed by abusive people within the household every single week. 
and and I think it's um, every 30 seconds the abuse hotlines are, be, are being called. And I actually heard from someone yesterday whose city is is being threatened with with lockdown, terrified because she's already been threatened by her partner in in the way that we similarly saw the the, the chilling words of um, "Let the games begin" uh, that someone said in in your documentary. What and also as a result of lockdown, obviously we're seeing all the horrendous consequences in, in, in now in, ma in many areas, but one of the results is that there are even less beds and less refuge places for people. What would you suggest, Victoria, to those people terrified now or if indeed they have to go into a local lockdown? Goodness. Um, I mean, you're right about the refuge spaces. They, that there are, during lockdown this time compared to last year, there were 1,100 fewer beds in refuges. And that was because of staff shortages, social distancing rules and all the rest of it, financial pressures as well. Look, lots of people don't leave their abusive relationships. And there are many, many reasons for that. Not everyone goes to a refuge. You know, it can be because they're absolutely frightened that if they leave, their partner will come after them and, and potentially kill them. It can be they think, I, I, I can't, I'm not financially independent. I can't leave. How can I go and take three kids with me? You know, when I was growing up, we didn't know, we didn't know the phrase domestic abuse. We'd never heard of a refuge. It just would, it was just not an option for us. I think now from this research that we've done for Panorama, which is you can watch on BBC iPlayer, it's called Escaping My Abuser. What we've shown is that a national lockdown in this country leads to more extreme, more brutal domestic abuse. So if we face that situation again, there's no excuse. We know what's going to happen to those living in abusive relationships. So the government, local authorities, charities, they have to put in place plans to help people either get support or get out. Yeah. And, and if you are watching this and you are in that kind of relationship, there are loads of organisations that can help you. But you, you do need to, you need to tell someone, even if it's just a next door neighbour or a friend or a relative. You need to tell someone, and they can help you find help. Victoria, thanks so much for taking the time to, to speak to us this morning. And of course, it's it's not just women, is it? Men are affected by, by domestic violence uh, as well. And if you have been affected by or are the victim of domestic abuse, then please visit our website for helplines and support.